Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, aka The Rig Doctor, and today I'm going to show you my techniques, my strategies, my approach on how to build an Amplis rig. So what is an Amplis rig? It means that it's a rig that doesn't incorporate or require the use of any particular amplifier in order to make the rig functional. Ordinarily, with most standard pedal board systems, we have all of our devices either running in front of an amp or some devices in front of the amp and some in the effects loop, and we're using the amplifier in order to create sound for the entire rig with which all of our pedals are running into. However, in the last few years, there's been this ampless rig craze where in essence, you're taking a pedal or some sort of small device that can fit onto a pedal board, and that's not only being used as your preamp and your power amp, but is also doing all of your speaker cabinet generation and miking, and then that's going into some sort of mixing board or into your DAW, and that ampless device is in essence incorporating all the things that would normally be required for you to have on an external amp, a head, a cab, and a microphone miking the cabinet. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I'm going to be building an Amplis rig for my friend Mitch Gallagher so that we can demonstrate for you the strategies and approaches and how your rig that's an Amplis rig might differ slightly from your ordinary guitar rig and where they might be the same or where you might even be able to use them interchangeably. So let's start with the first things first. On every single rig that we ever build, I always talk about the necessity for what I call the holy trinity of tone. And those are three things that if you do them properly, it's gonna ensure that not only is your rig dead quiet, but also is reliable and is not gonna have any signal loss. This involves using high quality buffers, soldered cables, and a high quality isolated power supply. If you wanna know more about these three pillars of the Holy Trinity of Tone, I highly recommend you check out our buffer on that subject that I have above and it will also be linked in the description. When you're starting to decide your signal path, think about things that you normally wouldn't want to be affected by distortion. Ordinarily, the way that I think about devices and how distortion affects them is I think of something like a delay, for example. Typically, we think of our delay pedals as something that you want distortion running into, you don't want to put them before distortion. And so in the case of using something like an Iridium, which can generate some distortion because it can emulate a distorted Vox or a distorted Marshall type sound or even a distorted Fender, I typically like to put all all of the wet processing effects after the Iridium, and anything that I would normally like to run in front of a dirty amp, put that in front of it. Even if you're used to running all your pedals in front of an amp, I don't recommend that you do it this way in the Iridium because you have so much more flexibility to get distortion and gain sounds out of the amplifier models themselves that I don't think it's worth risking having delay running in front of a distorted amp. It typically doesn't sound the way that people expect, and I generally don't recommend it in most case scenarios. So what's running in front of the Iridium in Mitch's case is anything that I'm considering a dry effect, distortion, overdrive, octave, volume pedal, even chorus we're running in front, although that is something that could be run after the Iridium depending on how you wanted to have your chorus voice. Typically the way that I think about it, and I think Mitch as well, when it comes to chorus, is most of the vintage choruses that we all know and love, like the Boss CE2, that was pretty much restricted to it as in front of an amp type of effect. Because of the era with which it came out, there really weren't effects loops available at that time, so almost all those choruses of that generation were almost all in in front of the amp effects, so Mitch is keeping it that way and I encouraged him to do that. But devices that are gonna be running after the Iridium are things like the delay and the reverb. And in this case, we have the Starlight from Universal Audio and we also have the Ventress from Source Audio. So we have our delay and reverb coming after. And I know what some of you might be asking is, is that gonna affect the amplifier and speaker modeling by having these two effects after it since the amplifier is not going directly into the mixing board? And the answer is, is that it doesn't. We're still getting all that amplifier treatment and it's essentially the same way as though you were running, say, some studio gear in series after you were coming out of the mic'd amp. Now if you did want to use your Amplis rig on occasion through a regular guitar amp, most of the Amplis systems allow you to bypass them. So you don't have to use them at all and then your pedal board in essence just becomes a standard serialized pedal board. If we were going to take this exact example of Mitch's, it would go from the chorus in stereo then to the starlight in stereo then to the Ventress and it would just cut the Iridium out of the picture. Some of these don't have a true bypass option. If that's the case you can always put it into a true bypass looper or if you have a switcher, you can put in one of the loops of the switcher so that you're able to completely hard bypass it from the entire system if you thought that you would be running into the front of a normal amplifier. To fasten all the pedals down to the pedal board, we're using our signature power grip 
pedal adhesive. This is allowing us to have the best possible locking capabilities to fasten our pedals to the surface of the pedal board. And once you give this a chance to cure, we recommend about 10 to 12 hours on each surface, both the pedal and the pedal board surface. If you give it that time to cure, once you start putting pedals down, you're not gonna have any risk whatsoever of any pedals coming apart or having any sort of issues with humidity in terms of how the adhesive from the actual grip tape might just pick up if it doesn't have a dry environment. This is the absolute best, highest quality adhesive that you can use to fashion your pedals to the pedal board. We're using that throughout the pedal board and you can always pick that up either on the rigdr.com or from Sweetwater. So once the layout has been determined, the first thing we get into is doing power. Now on this particular rig, we're gonna be using the Strymon Zuma, a high quality switch mode isolated power supply, just like I recommend in the Holy Trinity of Tone. We start at the pedal side with a molded end and then we wire into the power supply itself. We're using all of our Vertex signature cables throughout all of this, and we're using Kobecon connectors to terminate the molded cable into the power supply end. If you wanna get these exact same power supply cables, we sell those over on the rigdr.com. They're also available from Sweetwater. After we've wired everything in, we're then gonna to go to our audio signal. We're using all the Vertex signature cables. This is using Mogami 2314 and SP400 and SPS4 plugs from Square Plug so that we can connect every single device in series. Again, running all of our dry effects into the front of the Iridium, including our chorus, and then running all the wet effects, the delay and reverb with the Ventress and the Starlight after the Iridium. Every single connection is soldered, gas tight, just as we recommend in the Holy Trinity of Tone. We're using all of our pedal board essentials here. We put together some kits that are available through our website and at Sweetwater, so that you have all your zip ties and tie down mounts that you need in order to get all your looms of cable nicely run on the pedal board. A few other things that I should mention here. We built a custom interface for Mitch that allows him to do all the things that he needs for his rig. It's got an input buffer right as he comes into the pedal board. First thing he comes in, he hits that input buffer, he goes through his entire signal path until he reaches his volume pedal, and then he has an insert loop where he can audition or insert pedals after the volume pedal, but before he goes into his chorus in the Iridium. So this would presumably allow him to use other distortion devices, other modulation devices that he may need. And if nothing's plugged into that loop, it just normalizes. The interface box also has a power pass through. So whenever you're using something in audition loop, you have the ability to be able to power it so that you don't have to get external power or bring in some sort of wall ward in order to make that pedal functional in the course of the rig. If you wanna know how to build that exactly the same way as we did for Mitch, we're gonna have a link to diagrams that show you how to build this particular interface and buffer box that's gonna be in the links below. But enough of me talking about it. Let's head over to Fort Wayne, Indiana with my friend Mitch. Let's go through the rig. Let's see how he likes it. Let's look at the tones and see what he thinks about this Ampless rig. So when, when we first started talking about this, the, the point of this board was that I wanted a board that I could grab it and go uh, and primarily used for playing at church where we don't use any amps. We just run straight into the console. When I posted pictures of this board onto uh, to Facebook, I got a lot of questions about how you do that, where the amps are and everything. And the key to all that working is this Iridium pedal right here in the middle. So that takes us from having a dry, just straight guitar sound straight into the mixer. <laughs> which is kind of not so and, not so hip dry and gross. <laughs> <laughs> right? when we engage the uh, the iridium you have your choice of fender vox and marshall amps and three different cabinets for each one and so it creates the effect of playing through an amplifier so i'm actually on a vox here there's a little bit of a room effect there just to give it a little bit yeah. of depth and then we also have a favorite and i've got that same amplifier with just a little more gain So I've got my two amp sounds there, my clean sound, my dirty sound, and that's what I'm delivering to the board. To it's the incredibly console. convincing. I think so too. Well, let's trace down the signal path here. First of all, we've got a Strymon Zuma power supply. Excellent, underneath, best and, of the best. And you wired that up, and uh, one of the things about this board, as, as you'll, you'll be able to tell, even when we engage the drives, is that it's perfectly silent. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just no noise from the, the board itself, which is so cool. But what happens is we come out of the guitar and we go into your interface box. Yep. Now that has some electronics in it, right? Yeah, so we have we have a buffer here on the input of the, of the rig, and it doesn't have any output buffers, which I would normally do. The reason why we don't is that we're running it after the Iridium, and so we're already really low impedance. The Strymon output buffer on the Iridium is super low, 100 ohms, so we have plenty of line driving ability to carry whatever's coming after that and drive that back 
you know, to, to the mixer in this particular situation. So there's really no need for it there. We just have an input buffer on here. And then the, the rest of the throughs are all passive. Right. So typically the way I like to set my effects up is I have certain effects that are in front of the amp and that would include the overdrive pedals which we'll talk about and in certain processes I also like in front because they tend to affect what's happening with the distortion. Mm -hmm. So in this case I think if I remember right we're coming out of the buffer, the interface box and the buffer into the sub and up which is an octave pedal. Yes. So we've got... <laughs> So it's an octave divider, it gives me an octave yep. down, and actually we can also do an octave up, or you can do both. But for most of what I'm doing, most of my applications, I tend to just have the octave down. Yeah. Um, and that feeds into the distortion well, I find. Yep. If I turn on, the, again, our distortion here. What happens if you put an octave pedal like that after your distortion is that all the harmonics that are created by that distortion get shifted down an octave and you get a very strange sound. Or it, it doesn't sound right to yeah, me. Yeah, I would say the other thing that happens too when you put octave too far away from the input is it doesn't track very well. The closer mm. that is to the input, the better it's going to respond to your dynamics so that octave is triggering at the right time and you're not getting any sort of weird artifacts as a result of whatever sort of signal processing is happening before it. So getting it direct off the, the input of the, the guitar and in the buffer in this case is really advantageous for the sound. So I was even smarter than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, I knew there was yours. a reason. <laughs> yeah. So we go into the octave pedal, um, and then we're going into the tremolo, right? Then we're going into the tremolo, correct? The tremolo, which is the pulsing effect. And this is a pipeline tremolo from TC Electronic. It does a ton of different sounds, super versatile. And actually, yeah. the way it's set up is you can tap the tempo in by, by hitting your guitar and, and telling it what the tempo is, which doesn't matter a whole lot to me, but uh, Pretty it, cool it is feature. a cool feature. Yeah. It is yeah, a cool sure. feature. From there, we're going into the Archer, and this is a, a Jeff Beck version of the Archer, and it's basically a, a clon type pedal. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly clean boost. I'm using it for a little bit of just girth and a little bit of gain boost. <laughs> And then when we have the distortion on the Iridium. So there's a little bit of gain inside the Archer, but mainly I'm boosting a little bit of level, just kind of punching it out there Such a, a great pedal. It's my favorite Klon clone. It's really dynamic yeah, is what I, what I like about it. And with the Jeff Beck mod, it's just a little bit more open, yeah. a little bit more articulate. Mm. So that's our first gain pedal or distortion pedal that mm -hmm. we hit. The second one is the Dude, which is also from J-Rocket. And that's sort of a uh, recreation of a D-style ampli yeah, yeah, nice. style amplifier. So with the clean, and then with the distortion, so I've got a lot of different flavors there. We've yeah. got the clean. Oh, let's go back to clean. Clean with the Archer. Clean with the Dude. Then we've got the distortion in the amp with the Archer, with the Dude. Oops. And I guess we could stack the Archer and the Dude yeah. together. And go way over the top. Yeah. <laughs> I probably don't go that far very often. I'm not the, I don't use that much gain very often, but it's there if you need it. Right. If you need to just go for that face melting solo. You yeah, gotta... exactly. Which I, you know, I guess I do that pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, man. So that comes out then from the dude and goes into the volume pedal. And this is my behemoth of a visual volume. Yeah, this is the only pedal that I teased you about during, yeah. during the course of this build. <laughs> I actually really do love it though. I mean, I can totally see the value of. I mean, you can explain it better than me, but that visual display is actually a cool thing. Yeah, that's the thing that I, that's the whole reason for it is as you turn the pedal down, you can see the LEDs light up. And so when you're standing above it looking down, you can see where the pedal set. Yeah. And once you get used to having that, yeah. it's really tough. Especially and, on a dark stage because you can't see the contrast between the top of the treadle and the bass. So you right. have no idea sometimes if you're going like right into half volume or you're already at max. So right, that's right. Valuable. That's exactly right. And unfortunately, they don't make that pedal anymore, but yeah. uh, I've got a, a couple of them, one on each board. And, yeah. and I'm just hooked on them. So you had to put up with me having that on there. But that's it, does, right. it does take up some real estate. Man. Well, maybe you're going to start a new trend. So folks maybe. are going to start buying these on the used market. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Okay. So then we're coming out of the volume pedal and we're hitting a special feature in yeah, your interface box. Yeah, so what I did is I, I put a, an insert loop into it, and some people refer to this as an audition loop. And so basically what it is is it allows you to wire 
an external pedal off the pedal board, but in the middle of the signal chain. So in this case, it's after the volume pedal, but before we go into the chorus. So this can right. be kind of a, an audition spot or a pedal du jour, you might say. And I actually have a, a phaser that I just grabbed off the shelf that we can kind of demonstrate how this functions. So yeah, let's, let's plug that. that in. So tell us what you did there. You connected a lunar phaser from source audio into two jacks on the interface box, Yeah, right? so I basically put a send and return on the interface box. And again, that's breaking in between the volume pedal and the chorus and then you can wire this in just as a normal guitar pedal kind of in and out almost like you were putting it in in a loop of some kind mm -hmm. and then I also added a power jack on the side so you could power your auditioned pedal and not have to run a battery or run sort of external wall wart so it's kind of all self-contained within the interface you don't have to bring any external stuff that's so smart yeah. so that's great if we want just a special effect or something I'm only going to use one time and don't need it every time I play or whatever. right yeah something that's just like a like kind of a one-off you know like whammy or I don't know, some sort of specialty effects that may not be a course of every gig, but maybe you need it for cer certain specific, for a certain song or a certain part, you can bring it in and it doesn't need to add more space to your pedal. Right, or tear the board apart to wire it in or it, any of that kind of stuff. Exactly. So we've got the clean sound still works, or the amp sound and everything just works. But now this is just like it's on the pedal board. Yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. Such a convenience feature, man. I really, really appreciate having that on there. Absolutely. And the coolest thing is if I just unplug those two jacks, it all normalizes and it's all the, it's like it was never there. It just continues the signal path as though there was nothing breaking in at all. That's so cool. Well, let's bypass that. So then after our insert loop, we're hitting the CE2W, which is the Waza version of the old traditional vintage CE2 chorus man, they, from Boss. They man, nailed so it. Cool. It sounds so good. It sounds so good. I love it. And this is where I'm actually splitting the signal to stereo. Yep. So the normal signal path. That's just such a great sound. It's so lush. So cool. Yeah, I love it. And, and I love that it's stereo because the original one was not. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so nice. I could just play that all day. Nice. So then we go in from there in stereo into... The Iridium, you had to do a special jack for that, right? Yeah, so on the chorus, you have stereo outs, but then on the Iridium and a lot of Strymon pedals and a lot of other pedals, in fact, they are stereo input, but only via TRS, so you need an insert cable. But now at Sweetwater, you guys actually carry our custom-made insert cables. And so I just used one of the custom-made insert cables here to go stereo out of the chorus and wire it right into the input so you still maintain that stereo and you're just going TRS into the Iridium instead of having a single quarter inch for left and right. Nice, well that's convenient. So we are now in the Iridium. If we turn the chorus off, we're back to mono. Got our clean, we've got our kind of broken up Vox. And then the next thing we hit coming out of the Iridium in stereo is the Starlight, which is Universal Audio's yep. uh, delay. And I've got it set for a Deluxe Memory Man uh, kind of setting here. But the cool thing about this pedal is that there's two modes that you can use with this pedal. And now they have an app for it that allows you to set the mode. And the first mode is like you'd normally expect where you turn the, uh, the effect on. <laughs> Nice delay yep. there, and you can tap the tempo, so you can set the tempo by tapping. But the other mode turns that tap tempo switch into a preset switch, mm -hmm. so I can have a second setting mm -hmm. for like a big washy, yep. modulated reverb sound or whatever I want to have. Yep. Um, and so I actually have two delays in one yep. in this one box, which is one of the reasons I love it, but I also love it because it sounds fantastic. Right, you get those UA quality, you know, like plugins, and you can manipulate it in a piece of hardware. You know? Yeah, it's brilliant. I tend to go for the dotted eighth on one side and the quarter on the other. Which Sounds gives you brilliant. a nice spacious kind, oh of, my gosh, yeah. kind of a thing. Okay, from there then, we're going into the Ventress from Source Audio. There's a couple of reasons I chose this particular pedal. Uh, one is that it sounds fantastic. All the Source Audio stuff is great, no but doubt. the Ventress in particular sounds fantastic. It actually has two engines. And so the first engine I have set for just a short... It's a little bit of ambience, just, mm -hmm. to, just to give me some depth. But when I hit the option switch, I've got it set. There are a lot of things you can do with that, but I've got it set to turn on the second engine which I've got a huge special effect kind of reverb that I that I use sometime when you're doing that ambient kind yeah. of stuff. So when you combine that with the delay and the reverb and the uh, chorus rather. A 
that's just a beautiful, mm. beautiful ambient kind of tone that, that works so well in a lot of different situations. And being able to switch among all those different sounds makes the board, you know, we can go from basic reverb to add some delay. And then add some uh, drive on top of that. Chorus it if we want. So, so many different options with this board. I'm just thrilled with how it's worked out to take me from a clean amp to huge ambiences and all kinds of overdrives and things. So for such a compact board, this is 14 by 17, right? Yep. 14 by 17. Gives us a lot of options. Oh, I forgot one thing. The air turn it was essential right. for me also because I put all my charts on an iPad. So I've got an iPad Pro with all my charts for whatever band or whatever worship service or whatever. And the air turn lets me turn the pages. That's a, that's a handy thing. I, I didn't even, when you told me about it, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little Bluetooth pedal is all I it is. I was like so wondering when I saw it, I was like, where are the input and output jacks? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pedal is that? It doesn't make noise. <laughs> anyway, so that, that's another one of those cool features on this board is that I'm totally self-contained. I put my uh, iPad on the music stand, plug in my guitar, run a couple of lines into a direct box and how convenient. Make a music. Yeah, 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 it's, it's so incredibly cool. convenient. And it's tiny and lightweight, and I, I just love it. I'm, I'm so grateful to you. Yeah, man, it was, it was literally my pleasure. It was good to hang out with you. You, you, And I should, it should be said, we hung out the whole time <laughs> as I made this thing, and so it was really cool just to be in, in the process with you and, and show you what it is that I'm, that I'm doing. I'm really happy that we were able to get this together yeah. for you. Thank you, thank you. So that was our rig build for Mitch Gallagher again showcasing how to build an ampless rig, a rig that doesn't require any sort of amplifier and that you can run right into your mixing board without the need of a head, a cab, or any sort of microphone in order to get the sound of your rig to the front of house and to the audience. I really love this Triman Iridium. I think it sounds great. It's a small box, gives you lots of flexibility. You get all the kind of the big three Mount Rushmore amps available with the Marshall Defender and the Vox. You have the ability to customize the type of cabinet that you like to use with the RR loader. Very, very cool device. And of course, there's plenty of other great ones out there as well if you wish to change up and try a different sort of simulation for the amp and cabinet. If you like what you saw today, I highly recommend that you like, you subscribe, you hit the bell icon so you always stay up to date about new videos that we're coming out with, like this content here that you're watching today. If you wanna support us further, you can head over and check out our podcast on all the popular podcatchers. We do different podcasts that really resemble stuff that we talk about every day on the channel, but in a much longer form. We also have all of the resources and products that we used on this board available from our friends at Sweetwater and also over on the rigdr.com. And if you want to get some private consulting on your rig, you can always head over to the rigdr.com or head over to our Patreon page where we offer consulting services and also live streams where we do private Q&As on a weekly basis. And lastly, if you'd like to support by getting one of our pedals, you can always head over to vertexeffects.com, grab one of our pedals there, or check out all of our authorized dealers that might be in a city near you. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, aka The Rig Doctor from Vertex Effects. See you later.